from e learning channel museum now we have reached level four at this level we're going to learn many popular and famous classical songs with using major and minor chords and seventh chord too our first song for the level four is canon in d by pakabel one of my subscribers from philippine has requested this song a couple of months ago to learn this song we need to know major chord minor chords plus other techniques too so finally we can play the song i arranged this song in the key of c instead of key of d the original song is in key of d with the two sharps but i rearranged this song in easier key so we're going to play it in key of c now let's see how it goes if you look at the score you will find chords on it start with a c g a m a minor e m e minor f means f major c c major f and g again yes the literally all the major and minor chords that we have learned from previous lessons right as chord written on it you just literally play the notes f c f g and after that you will find the numbers two means it's not the major number but it's phrasing number it repeats back the same chord pattern over and over again so left hand plays the simply the chord names if it's a c you just play the c if it's a g you just play the g a m it really doesn't matter a m or a chord just play a and e just play e f c f g you only need to remember which c and which g so left hand has two patterns first basically playing in root position and the second you play it in one five one pattern instead of root position so in with one five one means again one five and one instead of playing again you just go up octave higher that's what the patterns of the song and if it's a g chord you play it g one five one and if it's a minor it really doesn't matter major and minor in here left hand you just play it a five one and again if it's e you just play it e five one and f a five one c again c five one so you just need to know which c you have to play that's all you need to remember right so very simple now all you have to do is focusing on your right hand let's see right hand the first line do you see the number two yes that's the second phrase the number stands for the phrase number not the measure number i didn't write the measure number instead i wrote the phrase number so that you will find which phrase it is just repeats the same patterns over and over again so actually it's easier to go by phrase now the second phrase the melody line is e d c very simple but you have to play a two note as a chord six and third again six and third and six third six and another six here so if you remember the pattern instead of reading each note it's much easier that's what the second phrase for the right hand and third phrase start from the second line number three left hand plays the c 
and bright and placed, breaking up the chord. So if it's a C chord, C E G, and then you repeat the C again. So simply is coming from the chord. And G, so left and G, and right hand starts from D, G, B. So at least you know what kind of notes will be played within the chord. If it's a G chord, nothing more than G, B, D. So left hand plays the G, and right hand plays the D, G, D. Here, like this. And, and move it into the third line, A minor. Left hand plays the A, and right hand plays the C, E. So literally A minor chord, and then you repeat the A again. And the next one, E minor. So left hand plays the E, and right hand plays B, E, G. So instead of going like this, you skip this G and play it up here. So this song has pattern, playing it on root position. C, E, G, C, and G, but you skip the B and play the next notes. G, B, D is a G chord, but you move this B to up here and play it. Do you see the pattern? If you remember the patterns, it's much easier to play. So now let's go from very beginning to phrase by phrase. I will play it both ends together. Let's see. First phrase to start with whole note. So you have long note and a measure. It just seems pretty slow and boring. C two, three, four, and G two, three, four. All you need to know is just notes and fingerings. Finger number two, three, four, and E. Two, three, four. It's F. Step up. But instead of play f with finger number four, use three. So you have to save the finger number five to go down to C next time. One, two, three, four, and F. One, two, three, four. Step up. Two, three, four. So this first pattern will be repeated three times. So you really need to remember the fingerings. Now it repeats back again in the second phrase, and right hand comes in on second phrase. So let's just start from the second phrase: C, G, E, one, two, three, four, and left hand G, right hand B and D, two, three, four, left hand step up A, right hand E and C, two, three, four, left hand E and right hand G and B. Two, three, four, and left hand three and right hand C and A. Two, three, four, left hand C and right hand E and G. Two, three, four, left hand F and right hand C and A. Two, three, four, left hand G, right hand step up. Just shift it up. That's the second phrase. So do you see it when you play a second phrase? Try to connect. Don't play at each note. Then it will be sound so bumpy and disconnected. So if you play it again, the second phrase, one, two, three, four, one, hold it and smoothly connecting it, one, and then you can go to you have to hold it and connect two, three, four. So between sixth and third, you have to connect as much as you can as the bob and phrase three. Now left hand plays the same as previous one, but the right hand is E, G, C, left hand G. Root position, G, 
that's the phrase three. Now, if we move it on to the next phrase, left hand plays 5-1-5 five, five pattern instead of repetition. And right hand plays the same melody line, but stepping down. One, two, three. I'm talking about the distance between two notes. So melody line, the same thing, but you play it in third. And adding middle note. G again, A minor, E, B coming down, F major chord, and C. what the right hands for the phrase for and left hand is one five one so you are adding left hand on the right hand that's easier so let's go phrase number four one two three go one two three four and then hold it and go to the d and g and left hand two with the three five squeeze in like this two three four and step up and play an E minor chord and left hand goes to E two three four F A left right hand and C chord two three four and F and A and left hand F chord Now, when you play fourth phrase, don't try to play at the very last note on the right hand. Don't play too hard. Because that's not the melody line. Melody line is E, B, C, B, A, G, A, B. This old dotted half note is the melody line. But this is so hard to play it like this so far. So I added the harmony with the right hand. So the very last note on every measure is actually belonging to left hand chords, not for the right hand melody line. So you have to remember to play it soft. Just play it soft. That's the melody line and then play it soft. This is melody line. One of subscribers asked me a good question. He asked me, why are you leaving the note earlier than it's supposed to be? You wrote it half a note, but you are leaving almost like one count. Yes, you know what? It's half note in here too, but I'm leaving it fast so that I can prepare for the next note. If I'm holding it full two count and if I move to the next note, I don't have much time to prepare for the next one. So that's why even if it's two count, one, two, I'm leaving little earlier than the beats and goes for the next one. This is an important technique to play a chord. You have to leave little early and then ready for the next chord. If you play a single melody line, you can just play it with the connecting it and then you have to hold it full value for the melody line. But left hand chord is a little bit different from the melody line. You have to be there a little early and prepare for the next chord. Thank you for your good question.